A device compliance policy lays down the law any time devices try to access corporate assets. Administrators can define rules about such things as the strength of device passcodes, for example, or the antivirus status or the minimum OS version. And the policy also defines the or else actions, like if the device is not at the minimum OS version, then send the user an email telling them to upgrade and block any managed apps from getting installed on the device. In this video, we'll define one policy for iOS devices and another for Windows. In the Workspace ONE UEM console, click Devices, Compliance Policies, List View, then click Add. First, we'll do iOS. On the Rules tab, we can leave it set to matches all of the following rules, rather than any, because it won't matter since we're only going to define one rule for this exercise. Take a second to look through this really robust list of all the different security-related rules we could create. For this example, select Passcode. So now the rule says that if the passcode is not present, and then we'll click Next to finish that sentence. The action to take is, and we'll select Notify. But you can see from the list that we could select Application, or we could run a command to do any number of things, or we could install or block installation of a device profile. The kind of notification we'll choose for this exercise is Send SMS to the Device. But we have several notification choices, including email and push notifications, and we can notify just the user or an administrator or both. Right now, leave the default template selected, but we'll come back to that later. Click Next. For Smart Groups, we'll select All Devices, but you could also click the Create Smart Group link if you wanted to define a smart group that you don't already have in the list. Click Next. On the summary page, we see the default name and description. Unlike in most wizards, which would have you name and describe the thing on the first page of the wizard, in this wizard, you specify the name on the last page. Click Finish and Activate. Now we'll create a policy for Windows. Click Add. Select Windows, Windows Desktop. This time, we'll make a rule regarding the OS version. We'll pick a really early Windows 10 version. Click Next. This time for the action, we'll select Application and we'll pick Block Remove All Managed Apps. But we could have just as easily selected to block or remove a particular app. Click Next. For Smart Group, we'll do All Devices again. Click Next. Click Finish and Activate. Now I want to show you one more thing. Remember when we created that policy that said to notify the user if the device was not compliant? Let's take a look at that notification template and customize it a bit. Go to Groups and Settings, All Settings, Devices and Users, General, Message Templates. And then filter the category by selecting Compliance. The message we want seems to be Compliance Violation User Notification. Select that and click Copy. To distinguish this from the default template for the name, add a dash and no passcode to the end of the name. And then we can add a description. We'll leave the subject line and then take a look at the message body. Oh, it contains a lot of variables. The first variable is for the date. Also, it will add the user's name and there are variables for that. It will add the policy name and the description we just defined. In our policy, we didn't define any policy violation actions besides sending this message. So we'll select and delete this variable and just write in no action yet and hope that sounds threatening enough. Let's look at the rest. In our policy, we didn't define any escalation time. So we'll just select and delete these variables and write in, please set a passcode on your device so that it will be more secure. And now in the policy, we just said that there needed to be a passcode. As for how long that passcode needs to be, that gets specified in the device profile rather than in the device policy. In an earlier video, we went through creating a passcode profile. Click Save. Close the window. Now we'll go back to Devices, Compliance Policies, List View, and click the Edit icon for the passcode policy. 
Click the Actions tab and deselect Default Template. Now we could have alternatively clicked this link when we were defining the policy in order to go to the message templates and create a new template there. But now we will just click the drop down list and we see the message we just created in this list. Select it and click Next, Next, and Finish and Activate, and we're done. If you have enabled compliance checking for managed devices in Workspace ONE Access, as was shown in another video in the series, then when users log in from their devices, the Access policy checks the Workspace ONE UEM server for device compliance status. Device compliance is determined by the rules that are set in the Workspace ONE UEM compliance policy, like the policies we've just created here. You can also define the compliance policy so that if the user does not make their device compliant within a certain period of time, the policy will install a device profile that restricts the settings in question. For more Workspace ONE technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.omnisa.com.